Germany and the world are finally getting a look at the new government that will succeed Angela Merkel's when she hands over the baton next week. With the pandemic accelerating the need for a smooth transition, the Social Democrats, Greens and Liberal Free Democrats are beginning to reveal both priorities and differences. The first three-party coalition in over 60 years says it wants to take a chance on progress. But can the world's fourth largest economy really put values at the center of foreign policy when it depends on trade with China? And how to deal with Russia, which is upping the pressure on Ukraine and supporting Belarus destabilizing the EU? Clean energy, digitalization, immigration, change is needed on many fronts. Is Germany's new government the dawn of a modern age? Welcome to To The Point. It's a pleasure to welcome our guests. Thomas Sparrow is a DW political correspondent, and he says, the new German government's goals are ambitious, but they will probably be overshadowed by major international crises. And it's a pleasure to welcome Derek Scully from the New York Times. He says Germany's new government wants to take a tougher line toward Moscow and Beijing, despite growing dependence on Russian gas and Chinese car customers. Viel Glück. And it's great to have with us Anna Lehmann from the daily newspaper The Tuts. She thinks the new coalition promises to modernize German society, less tradition and rules, more liberties. The new government doesn't officially enter office until next week, but it's already getting a baptism by fire, as it were, due to the upsurge of COVID cases in Germany. Members of the new and old government met this week with the heads of state premiers to try to talk about crisis management. I'd like to talk, first of all, about what we can glean from the way they handled that. And let me ask you, Derek, if I may, and by the way, I got it wrong on your introduction. You are, of course, with the Irish Times. Um, there's been a lot of debate about Olaf Scholz's leadership style. What could you say uh, uh, now, based on what we saw this week? It had been thought he would lead from behind, but did he? No, he seems to be trying to get ahead of the curve. Um, he's still struggling. Uh, throughout the COVID crisis, Germany has been sort of overtaken by events. The decisions are sort of all me immediately overtaken by events. He seems to be trying to get ahead of things, but he's still sort of trapped in the Merkel way of doing things. But he's promised new expedited decision making, clear competence divisions between Berlin and the federal state. So I'm optimistic that could change. But yeah, Germany has a, really wants to do everything thoroughly. But in a pandemic, sometimes you just have to try something quick. Uh, rather than wait around for consensus. So I think he's going to be a little bit more dynamic than Merkel has been. You saw him then as a, as being decisive in this case? Well, he said, I mean, he's he's made very clear decisions about what he wants this week, um, but whether that will continue in, in the January and February when things start to get very messy. Um, I'm hopeful, a fresh start, you have to give somebody the benefit of the doubt. And he's been given slight little digs towards Merkel that she's always been sort of um, slower to act than really the pandemic uh, demands. Thomas, your opening statement uh, said that you thought uh, multiple crises could trip the new government up. Certainly they are now already engaged in crisis management. What would you say we can, we can conclude from what we've seen so far? They will have to deal first and foremost with the coronavirus pandemic, with the fourth wave, which is certainly extremely difficult now. And I think I disagree with you when you say that you're optimistic about Olaf Scholz having a, a different style of government. I think we will see more of the same style of government. He was chosen as a sort of continuation of what we already know. Germany is not a country that moves very quickly. It very much focuses on, on stability, on moving slowly but surely. He in fact said in an interview this week that you know me, which is something that Angela Merkel also said on various occasions. So I think we will see more of the same style of leadership. Obviously, some specific new mm. points, maybe, but nothing very radical where you can say, oh, this is definitely the dawn of a new era, as you, as you said. Mm. Germany's new government will be first and foremost concentrated on dealing with these crises that I mentioned, not only coronavirus, but also migration, uh, for example. And it will only after that be clear to what extent they will be able to deal 
with other issues and present their coalition agreement, 177 pages of a coalition agreement. Anna, your opening statement uh, talked about uh, more liberty and fewer rules, and certainly that is what the Free Democrats want and what they campaigned on. Now, they are putting a good face on the outcome of uh, this week's uh, pandemic crisis management meeting, uh, but wouldn't you say, in effect, they were largely overridden by the Chancellor in waiting? Um Yes, I think so. I, I, can, I, I think we can see this week how quick things can change, especially the Liberal Democrats uh, were thinking Corona and uh, freedom that can go along. Uh, but now we see uh, that the new government will impose even tougher uh, rules uh, on fighting this uh, crisis. And uh, we are talking even about a duty for vaccination in Germany, uh, which we excluded to this point. Thank you very much. Um, some would say that the worker-friendly Social Democrats uh, and the climate-driven Greens, uh, Greens, as well as the market-oriented Free Democrats, are rather unlikely bedfellows. But the soon-to-be Chancellor, Olaf Scholz, says that the three see as one when it comes to the need for transformation. We are not interested in the lowest common denominator, but the policy of big impacts. We want to trust ourselves and dare to make progress in climate protection, in restructuring our industry, in modernizing the country, in strengthening social cohesion. Derek Scully. Taking a chance on progress, um, that is the banner in, under which this coalition has presented its a coalition agreement. Is the need for progress really that great? Uh, are we, in essence, concluding that the era of Merkel was an era of stagnation? I don't think the era of Merkel was stagnation, but it was definitely consolidation and stability. I mean, she never really pushed through a, a controversial reform program, although there's an awful lot that needs to be reformed. And as she's stepping down, suddenly the tide is going back and people are seeing, you know, Germany's infrastructure is crumbling in many parts of the country. You know, digital infrastructure is not existent. People are using fax machines in the pandemic and so on. So, um, yeah, there's, there's an awful lot to do. So she wasn't really a progressive chancellor, but you could say she had enough crises to deal with. But it would have been interesting, the counterfactual, if there hadn't been those crises, would she have been courageous? Would she have moved Germany forward? I don't think so. So, yeah, more progress, a progressive government, I think that's really quite a positive approach. And what they're tipping on, they're trying to recall people's memories of the 1970s, Willy Brandt as a progressive new leader after the de decades of conservative leadership. And that was a government with the Free Democrats. And they said there's a social liberal consensus here. Now they're trying to bring in the Greens, with whom the Social Democrats have also worked in the past, and say there is a common lead, uh, there is a common denominator, a central point, and that is moving the country forward progress. And there's a lot, a lot of small details in there, uh, particularly on social policy, um, that will make, I think, a big difference in Germany. But yeah, as Thomas said, the big ticket items are tackling the pandemic and uh, energy, because Germany is switching off its less, last nuclear plant next year. And where are we going to get the, the energy for, for all of our d devices? I want to uh, dive a bit deeper on that uh, in a moment. But let me ask you this, uh, Anna. Olaf Scholz is not exactly a new face in German politics. He was, in fact, the finance minister under the outgoing government. Can we really expect him to deliver renewal and change? Yeah, in fact, uh, Olaf Scholz is a well-known politician. He's uh, what you would call an apparatchik, a functionnaire. Uh, but uh, the, coalition he, the coalition he leads and uh, the combination of parties is new. And from that, you can uh, expect a certain kind of progress. And you have, indeed, uh, some fields in the uh, society that will be modernized, if you think, about uh, abolition rights, about uh, um, doctors uh, wanting to inform about abolition. This won't about be abortion. illegal. Mm -hmm. about, uh, abortion, yeah, of course, about abortion. And uh, the right for uh, people being gay to have a legal child, uh, they will have automatically custody now for a child that's born in, the, in, in their family. And uh, 
so on, and you will have a new immigration right, which will be more modern, more open to people coming to Germany and uh, wanting to work there, wanting to make science and so on. So in some fields of uh, society, they really, I think, they really want to modernize society and uh, get on, move ahead. Uh, Thomas, in fact, the coalition partners said that they went into their negotiations not looking at where their red lines were, where their divisions were, but at what projects they could actually agree on initiating together. We just heard Anna name some of them. There are others like cannabis legalization. Uh, but beyond those sort of social issues, where do you see the biggest potential for actual progress? One of the main challenges, I think, will be implementing those changes, not, the one, not only the ones that you have mentioned, but also in terms of foreign policy. Uh, the fact that a green politician, Annalena Baerbock, will Come be that, yeah. the next uh, foreign minister will certainly be very interesting. But my question, my main doubt, is to what extent she will be able to bring all those points forward when you consider that you not only have internal aspects to discuss, so the fact that you have a three-party coalition, but also when you're dealing with other countries, for example, in the European Union. But I want to stress one thing. One of the main criticisms levelled against Angela Merkel's government was that she wasn't in a capacity to really present a vision for Germany, that she was constantly dealing with one crisis after the next, so the financial crisis, the eurozone crisis, the migration crisis, the pandemic, and that she was, because she was dealing with that, she was not in a capacity to really say, my vision for Germany is this. So do you see a vision in this new government? I do see a vision in this new government. If you, if you read those 177 pages of the coalition agreement, you clearly see the goals where they want to take the next government. That's one thing. Another very different thing is whether they will actually achieve to implement those things when you consider that they have to deal right okay. from the start with a very difficult crisis. Half a sentence. What is the vision? Well, the vision is change and modernization, modernity, bringing Germany towards a more modern path. And you can fill it with content if you want. You saw that in that banner. We've been discussing it as well uh, here. It is a vision. I'm not sure whether they will be able to implement that vision just as Angela Merkel okay. wasn't. And we're going to come to exactly that point. Whether the traffic li light coalition, as it's called, because of the colors of the three parties uh, that join together in it, whether it sets things in motion or slams on the brakes depends very much on the potential for cooperation between two men who are united by strong ambition but diverge widely on politics. Robert Harbeck, Green Party co-chairman and PhD in philosophy, will head the new Super Ministry for Climate, Energy and the Economy. The department is tasked with pushing forward Germany's modernization. Energy transition, digitization, restructuring of society. And Harbeck wants to make history. And at the core of this new story that we can write together is reconciling prosperity and climate action. Vereinbarkeit von Wohlstand und Klimaschutz. Phasing out coal, expanding renewables, pricing of climate damaging exhaust gases come at a cost. Yet the turning point is expected to be acceptable, especially for business. Its guarantor in Germany is traditionally the FDP. Its leader, Christian Lindner, is a political scientist and will be Germany's next finance minister. He'll be a powerful player counterpart in the new government. Germany remains an advocate of sound finances, especially given many people's concerns about inflation. This is important. In the end, the finance minister decides what funds are made available for what, and in parliament, each of the governing parties can block proposals. How much progress will the new federal government be able to push through? And let me put that question right to Derek. And the fact is that the progress they're promising, and very much of it is about climate, is going to have a very big price tag. And quite a bit of the funding, especially in the area of the climate transformation, in transformation of energy systems, will have to come from the public hand. Do you actually see this government being able to deliver that with a finance minister who is very attached to the so-called debt break, which is now written into the German constitution? Yes, I'm looking at the traffic light behind you and right at the top is red and the SPD quite clearly delivered on what they want, social policy, so minimum wage of 12 euros, stable pensions, more child support and so on. And um, 
um, and tackling the housing crisis. And the FDP, pro-business, their supporters are lawyers, doctors. They got no tax increases. Uh, that was like the, the red line for them. The Greens got a lot of aspiration. We will, we aspire to do stuff. So everyone agrees that the climate change has to happen. But when you look at what the Greens got, it looks a little less secure. And I think in Germany, the, the climate debate has yet to move beyond the idea that the climate change can happen. It won't cost anyone, it won't harm anyone, it won't hurt anyone. It's like a a good value package holiday. And I think the political debate has to move on. It will actually cost, and it will cost money. What are we prepared to do? And Habeck is trying to turn it from a negative into a progressive. Why don't we use Germans' engineering ingenuity to come up with a way to paint green industrial economies? And Germany can create this technology and sell it worldwide. So once you bring companies on board, I think you can convince people that it maybe will help pay for itself, at least. Otherwise, it just looks like big state trying to impose something on people, and that won't work with the FTP. Anna, the fact is that uh, leading economists say that the coalition's program is not financed. They do not see the sources of funding within the program as it stands. And as I said, the debt break is written into Germany's constitution. Mm -hmm. Are there any ways to get around it to deliver the kind of public investment that would be needed, for example, to extend electricity transmission systems to bring wind energy from the north to the south, to name just one example? Um, yeah, the, 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 the tides are strong, but there are some ways, small ways. For instance, uh, Angela Merkel's government, uh, they uh, took credit over 100 uh, billion euro, and I think they don't didn't need the, the, all the money to solve the pandemic. So uh, there is still some money in the bank, and this money is used uh, for the transformation. And there will be the possibility, although the uh, Liberal Democrats try to rule it out, to take more credits. Uh, uh, by companies like the barn and uh, by the railway. Th yeah, so the, the, the so called shadow households, there will be shadow households, although small. Yeah, so, so there's called some off balance sheet borrowing yeah. uh, on the so part of the state. There will, there will be, and, and I wanted to say, yes, there will be uh, money for the ecolog uh, ecolog ecological transformation, for the transformation of the economy. But the question is will there be money left for the social? Uh, task for the so-called burger guild for the kindergarten sharing. Will there be any money left for a uh, substantial rise of those benefits? I don't think so. Social welfare programs. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Thomas, both uh, Mr. Lindner and Mr. Habeck see themselves as heading super ministries with cross-cutting missions, with a sort of veto power over the initiatives of other ministers. Uh, would you say conflict is inevitable? Will that put the brakes on, uh, to use that traffic light uh, metaphor again? I do think that there will be conflict in this coalition. It's important to understand that German governments are usually formed by different parties. We've had in the past a so-called grand coalition, so two parties, and conflict was already very much present there. Now you have, for, for the very first time in many decades, a three-way coalition, and these three parties are, under no circumstance, natural allies. There are very different priorities that they want to, to push forward, very different priorities that are for them, red lines, as you mentioned, Derek. And I do think that one of the main challenges in the next four years will be trying to bridge those differences. There's one step in that, that direction, namely the coalition agreement. You mentioned it as well, Melinda, where you said we, they want to focus on what's common and not what's different. But in practical terms, there will be different priorities. And it will be interesting to see in the next four years to what extent these parties, and in particular those two politicians, are capable of bridging their own differences. Let's talk a bit about the priorities on foreign policy, because there too there are some, uh, some incipient divisions, and the challenges are many and tough when it comes to foreign policy. The designated foreign minister is a newcomer. She says her lack of experience is an asset that will help her take a fresh approach. Annalena Baerbock is Germany's first female foreign minister. She wants her policies to focus on democracy and human rights. This is what the Greens have written into the coalition agreement and is especially true regarding the superpowers, Russia and China. Russia's aggression towards Ukraine and China's threats against its neighbors and aggressive trade policy could be sanctioned more strongly in the future. EU members such as Poland and Hungary are also coming under fire, as their disregard for democracy and the rule of law are a thorn in the side of Germany's new government. 
Can a values-based foreign policy be successful? Derek, you implied with your opening statement that it will be pretty tough to implement a values-based foreign policy given this country's dependent, uh, dependence both on Russia and China for energy uh, and for commercial relations. Yeah, I mean, that's part of the Merkel legacy. You know, in her rush to get Germany out of nuclear energy after Fukushima, she wanted to have green energy, but to fill the gap, they have to import gas. Uh, and completely uh, wrong, uh, blindsiding her neighbours in Poland and, and other Eastern countries decided, oh, Germany will just do its own foreign policy and uh, our energy policy. Um, and on, on China, I mean, every second Volkswagen is sold now in China. Um, do you really think Germany will do anything to endanger Volkswagen, which is partly owned by the state of Lower Saxony? So Germany's always had, in my view, sort of the policy, foreign policy it wants to have, the moral foreign policy it tells people about, and it will lecture people around the world about what it's what they're all doing wrong. But when you actually look at how hard-nosed German foreign policy is, how soft it is on certain issues, it'll be very interesting to turn up the pressure on China and Russia, who are, in one case, one of their best customers, and in the other case, the country that's helping keeping German voters warm. So um, I'm, it'll, it'll be an interesting one. But let she's me, a trampolinist. She's let me see if Anna, if, yeah. if Anna agrees with you, because Annalena Baerbach, the incoming foreign minister, spoke to your paper this week and said that she advocates and will implement a mix of dialogue and toughness. What do you think? Can she bring it off? Well, I think she... Uh, yeah, she definitely has announced a tougher approach towards uh, China and Russia. Uh, in the coalition treaty, there are trigger words like uh, uh, Hong Kong, like Taiwan, like uh, rivalry of uh, systems and so on. And she even didn't rule out a boycott of the Olympic Games, which I didn't think uh, don't uh, she never will uh, uh, it will never come. But anyway, there is a tougher approach towards uh, China, and I uh, I think she used uh, the words uh, silence is no dip uh, diplomacy. That is a criticism on Heiko Maas, her predecessor. But it also, uh, she also said we will uh, we will use the economic level maybe a bit. Uh, more like uh, China has an interest, interest to, uh, to enter the Euro uh, single European market and maybe uh, we should use this inter interest uh, to set our values. So economic bring. levers. Um, uh, Thomas, your opening statement mentioned, uh, mentioned uh, potential crises on the horizon. Certainly uh, a number of them emanate from Russia. It is stirring up trouble at the moment uh, with uh, or via Belarus as well as in uh, on the border to Ukraine. The Greens and the SPD don't exactly seem to see eye to eye on, on Russia, do they? The relation to Russia will be, in my opinion, one of the most interesting ones of this next government. And it will be really important to see how well or how difficult the relationship is between Olaf Scholz and Vladimir Putin. Because you always had, during the 16 years of Angela Merkel, one line from the German government, and that is, we want to keep channels of communication open. And Angela Merkel and Vladimir Putin, even though they did not see eye to eye on many things, at least they were in a capacity to talk to each other, and they knew each other very well. I am not sure whether that will be the case with this new uh, government and Olaf Scholz. It will be very important, in my view, to understand how that relationship develops and what that means for all those practical problems that you are mentioning. It's not only about Belarus, it's not only about migration, it's also about Nord Stream, for example. A very, very difficult topic for, for Germany. The gas pipeline. The gas pipeline, which will join, will bring gas from Russia to, uh, to Germany. I think it will be one of the key foreign policy challenges of this next government to really understand how to deal with Russia and how to combine political interests, so that toughness that Annalena Baerbock has uh, vouched for that she wants to bring, and on the other hand, very concrete, very real interests that bind these countries together. And I see it as a very difficult challenge, actually, for the next government. Lim I'm sorry, but our time is slow, limited, and I don't want to miss the EU. So I'm just going to take yeah, I us. I to come to that ah, point. Very good. Uh, okay, please. I, 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 I just wanted to add uh, that it will be crucial if they if they are able to bring the European partners on one uh, at at one table. If they how 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 how, uh, how able Germany will be to form or to be a leader or go ahead for a common European. 
uh, foreign policy because uh, Europe is, an, is not in a good condition right now and, and Germany can go ahead as uh, the, uh, the, the most... Uh, mm. The trouble the is biggest that, uh, economy is we in the need EU. to have current foreign policy and they'll say, oh yeah, like we should have had common energy policy, you know. Mm -hmm. So Germany doesn't really have much moral credibility to be a leadership on unilateral, when it's pursuing yeah, it's unilateral biggest, policy yeah. on energy. Let, and me, it's, you let know, me ask you about yeah. another aspect of EU policy, if I may. The coalition agreement gives a strong nod to France and it also talks about further development of a quote-unquote federal European state. Could we see real movement from Germany when it comes to Europe? No, I think um, it'll be more of the Merkel line. There'll be a little bit of flexibility on the EU Euro rules, but everyone I've spoken to said, no, expect more of the Merkel legacy to continue with Olaf Scholz. Um, and um, that there'll be small changes, but no revolution, more evolution. Thomas, what area, if any, would you say this coalition could bring the dawn of a modern era? One sentence. Climate. I hope it will be important, as Derek said, to change the political discourse, the political debate on climate. And the fact that the Greens are there is a particularly important issue. Big question, how they will implement it. Thank you very much. Thanks to all of you for this, uh, this dash through all of the challenges facing the new German government. And thanks to you for tuning in. See you soon.